Welcome today to a study in the Word. This is Evangelist Jimmy Swaggart along with Donnie and Gabe. And thank you for being with us today to study the Word of God together. We are studying the rise of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the one that Jesus referred to as the son of perdition. And uh, it's to me, and I would hope it is to you as well, it's a most interesting study. I mean, phenomenally interesting. This is something that's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, in the very, very near future. The only thing that gives us any indication as to what it's all about, what is going to take place on this planet in the very near future. All right, we're in the, the great seventh chapter of Daniel, and we asked the question on the program, I think it was day before yesterday, all, as Donnie mentioned, all kind of, uh, of viewpoints as it regards end time events are held by the church. I meant you've got them from the supreme to the sublime to the ridiculous. And um, somebody said, well, how do you know that you are right? Well, the only criteria is the Word of God. And that's why we're coming to you as we are strictly from the Word as it regards these all important events that are true soon to break forth upon this planet. We've dealt with the rapture of the church. We're now dealing with the Antichrist. The reason we're spending so much time dealing with him is because all of this time and space is, is, is given to him in the Word of God. And it's going to be Satan's fell swoop, so to, sw so to speak. Satan's his last effort, his, his last fling to take over this planet completely and to dethrone God. He will invest more in this man of sin than he ever has anyone else. And but for the second coming of the Lord, he would succeed. But the second coming of the Lord will take place. So we're, we're devoting quite a bit of time in the study of the man of sin. Pick up where we left off yesterday, please, Gabe. The 24th verse of the 7th chapter of Daniel in the Exposure Study Bible. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Some teach that the ten toes and ten horns of Daniel, chapters 2 and 7, are ten barbarous tribes which overran the old Roman Empire between A.D. 351 and A.D. 474. However, this is error because of the following. The God of heaven is to set up a kingdom on earth in the days of these kings. You find that in the second chapter of Daniel, verses 44 and 45. You find it in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses, uh, verse 11, through, uh, and then chapter 20, verse through 7. It should be obvious to all that the Lord did not set up such a kingdom in A.D. 351-474. In fact, He has not yet done so. Therefore, it is obvious that the ten horns representing ten nations are yet future. And He shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. What does all that mean? Now look at the notes. And he shall speak great words against the Most High as used several times by the Holy Spirit in various ways, drawing our attention to the blasphemy of the Antichrist. The phrase, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time, refers to Israel being defeated and being greatly persecuted for a period of three and a half years. That's what the phrase times, uh, time, times, and dividing of time means. It pertains to three and one half years. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. The angel refers back to verse 10. But the judgment shall sit refers to the throne of God, and the judgment passed upon the Antichrist by that heavenly court. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. The greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven refers to the entirety of the earth, 
with Jesus Christ reigning supreme. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much trouble me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. This verse indicates that Daniel, despite the interpretation of the angel, still did not fully comprehend the extent of his vision, and rightly so. But once again, I want to call your attention to the fact that this great vision that Daniel has or had portrays the Lord taking over the kingdoms of this earth. And when it's set up here, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. He's, he's speaking of Israel. Israel will once again, after accepting Jesus Christ, this will be in the coming kingdom age, will be placed in her position as the priestly nation of the world. Actually, the sacrificial system will be reinstituted, reinstated in the coming kingdom age. Oh, what you just said there opens up a can of worms that most of the church just goes absolutely crazy over. Why? They, when we taught this on Mother's program, the emails, the phone calls, the indignant responses. What do you mean the, the, pre, the sacrifice will be reinstituted? Jesus paid that once and for all at Calvary. Why, why would he go back to offering up lambs? Didn't he pay the price completely on Calvary's cross? And they don't understand that it is an ongoing living memorial. That's it. In representation, they just, they, look, they just, I have people, you'd read them all the scriptures and they just say, I don't, I don't believe it. Well, you're saying you don't believe the Bible then. In Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48, I believe it is, and, and, um, let me see, make sure if I've got, my, got the thing here right, correct. And uh, yes, 48, 48 chapters in Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48, nine chapters in all. It gives a description of what Israel is going to be and do in, in the kingdom age. Mm -hmm. uh, they, will, they will probably, the land area given to her at that time, will include all of modern Saudi Arabia. It will include all of the Middle East. It will include about half of Iraq. And uh, it will include all of Lebanon and Syria. It's going to be probably 20, 30, 40 times bigger then than it is now. And those chapters proclaim the erection of the Millennial Temple mm -hmm. and the reinstitution reinstituting of the sacrifices, not all of them. All of them won't be reinstituted. That's in Ezekiel chapter 44. Right. But, but the, 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 the sin offering will, the trespass offering, and whole burnt offering, and so forth. All right. Now, th there will be people from, and we'll get to all of this more when we get to the kingdom age, but there will be people coming from all over the world to Jerusalem constantly. Mm -hmm. And they will come and sacrifices will be offered. But it will be, even despite the fact that Jesus Christ will be reigning personally from Jerusalem. I mean, he will be reigning over the entirety of the earth. The, Isaiah said, the government of the world shall be upon his shoulder. There will be no more war or whatever the case. Christ will reign supreme. There will be prosperity for the whole world. I don't mean just one or two nations or a few people in each nation. I mean, there will be no more poor people in the world at that time. Poverty is totally done away with. There will be no more war. When you realize that, I read this 20 years ago, I don't know now, but they said that then the nations of the world were spending an average of $3 million a minute on weapons. $3 million mm -hmm. a minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you, you can, it's probably much more now. That was 20 years ago. Understanding that, that those amounts of money won't have to be expended on weaponry anymore, but can be put to, to better use in the world, it won't be too difficult to understand why the world will be changed. Then the deserts will blossom like a rose. I was looking at a documentary the other day on the Sahara. 
the biggest desert, I guess, in the world, I suppose, or one of the biggest anyway. They said under that desert, there's underground rivers running like crazy under the desert. Mm. They once were flowing above the ground, but due to sin, the world is gradually, the deserts are taking over. It's not much, but each year the deserts become a little bigger, a little bigger. The world is a desert. In the coming kingdom age, there will be no more deserts. The deserts, Isaiah said, will blossom as the rose. And these rivers will come into view and it will, Saudi Arabia, which is now a desert, will be the, one of the most productive places on the face of the earth. But I said all of that to say this. All of that, the peace, the prosperity that's coming up on the earth at that time will be because of Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. And once again, Israel in her rightful place as the priestly nation of the world. Actually, people will tell their leaders, you bless Israel, because if you don't, we won't get any rain mm -hmm. and we won't be blessed. So that Israel is going to be blessed and the whole world will be blessed. But it, it will be the people due to the fact of all the, the grandeur and the glory of the kingdom age, will have a tendency to forget that what bought this, what made this possible, was by what Jesus did at the yeah. cross. And the sacrifices will have a tendency to pull their minds back to the cause of all the prosperity, the cause of all the freedom, the cause mm -hmm. of all the blessing, that's what it's for, a memorial to say this is all here because of what Jesus did at the cross of which these animal sacrifices are a type. Now answer me a question. You said on your mother's radio program when y'all talked about this, you got all kind of emails. I don't understand if it's in the Bible, what are they talking about? You read, I would open up. I remember them calling in. And I would open up, and I'd even tell them, do you have a Bible handy? Yes. Read it yourself out loud. And they would read these verses. And I would say, now there, that's the millennial worship that's coming as a, a known God. Gabriel, turn to Ezekiel 45, verse 16. Go ahead. Is a living memorial for the peoples of the world. And they still, well, I, I see it's there, but I just can't accept it. I don't understand why it has to be. Didn't Jesus pay? And I kept telling him, yes, he did. But it is a memorial. It is an all, exactly what you said, that people will recognize the price that was paid for this peace right. to be upon the earth. That this everything that yeah. we have is because of what Jesus did at Calvary. And they, 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 don't, they, they, they don't understand the makeup of the world of that day. There will be nations right. in the world of that yeah, day. Right. And they will have to send emissaries to Israel so many times a year to participate in these feasts and these offerings and to recognize that Christ is Lord. And right. it's all because, it, but they can't quite get their head around See, it. See, the Feast of Tabernacles is going to be reinstituted right in the coming kingdom age because it symbolizes, the Feast of Tabernacles uh, does, it symbolizes Jesus Christ ruling and reigning supremely in the world and the world at peace. And I want you to read, uh, Gabriel, starting with the 16th verse uh, of the 45th chapter of Ezekiel, please. All the people. Excuse me. Now this pertains to the coming kingdom age, ladies and gentlemen. It's not pertaining to Ezekiel's day which he lived 500 years before Christ. It's reaching forward toward the coming kingdom age of which chapters 40 through 48 deal with exclusively. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel. These offerings will be incumbent upon all. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths in all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. The phrase to make reconciliation for the house of Israel refers to atonement. However, 
it is to be ever understood that it is only symbolic. As Christ has already made atonement, thereby reconciling Israel and all the world to God by his death at Calvary. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month and the first day of the month, you shall take a young bullet without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. The contrast between the legislation of verses 18 through 25 and that of Leviticus emphasizes the difference between Mosaic and millennial worship. Here, the year begins with a demonstration of accomplished redemption and the provision of a pure ground of worship. Thus shall atonement be made for the house on the first day and for the worshipers on the seventh day. The year will therefore begin with a memorial of a perfected atonement for sin. In Leviticus, the year closed with an atonement pointing forward to a cleansing yet to be accomplished. And it is going to be accomplished, ladies and gentlemen. As Donnie has stated, this is all for symbolic, to symbolize what Jesus Christ did at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And I, I really cannot understand how that that anybody would be upset over that. I don't. Oh, they, they look to quite, oh, the statements that, that how brutal this has already been done away with. Never, will, you know, the, and they, they start quoting scripture, you know, the lamb is. And, and, it was done away with. It, it was right. done away with. But they can't, they can't get their head around how great the sacrifice was and the tendency in the new, in the millennial reign. For this to ever be brought before the people, as you just said, that they will forever continually yeah. have a clear understanding that all that they have in its glory and its grandeur is simply because of Christ shedding his blood on Calvary's cross. Representatives from every nation in the world will participate in yes. these sacrifices. Now, Israel will offer them up. The, the Gentiles who come in won't offer them up. But they will they will bring the lambs representatives from nations and areas right. of the world constantly, never ending, almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That the world may know that the peace and prosperity you have, the glory, the grandeur, the riches, all that is made possible, a world without war, without poverty, without hunger, without terrible problems that face humanity today is all because of what Jesus did at the cross, of which these sacrifices are symbolic that we never forget, that we never forget. Why do you think, you've been there, Gabe's been there, I have too, why do you think our government spends a ton of money each year keeping up the battleship Missouri, the, even though it's sitting on the bottom of Pearl Harbor Bay? Uh, Arizona. I'm sorry, the battleship Arizona, thank you. Wh why? As a memorial. As a memorial. That we not forget. Exactly right. And you could go on, you go to Gettysburg, you see the same exactly thing. Exactly right. And, 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 and fiddling is so, I know we've got to close. If you want to know the greatness of America, you don't look at Wall Street. Right. You look at the military graveyards. Exactly. And, and the price that was paid to, for our freedom. That's it. That's it. And it's, it's that we not forget. And it will be the same way in the coming kingdom age. And uh, listen, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And whatever you do, tell others about a study in the Word. And second, don't miss the program.